Hello, today we're going to be having a look at the Theocrat class, as represented here today by Nomlik Trismegistus, a goblin in the clouds. You see him here, in his capital city of Ramis, in the little blighted mushroom swamps. And over here to the right we see our foe, Larissa Mirabilis, a sorcerer, a witch no less. I'm going to break into her city and burn her at the stake for heresy. Now, this is a um, scenario that we've set up so that you can sort of see what the end game will look like. And... Right, let's have a look at what kind of spells we can cast. Now, as a theocrat, our spells are all religiously themed. We can mark people as heretics. We can summon cherubs, little flying demon baby monsters. We can have a beacon of faith set up in our city so that it grows faster. A paid absolution. You can force the citizens to pay us for the privilege of being um, members of our religion, stuff like that. Let's start off, let's mark Larissa as a heretic. Always a good place to start. So that means that we'll be able to do more damage to her units. Now we're going to be mostly focusing on battle today, so I'm going to bring my army over here. And engage. Now, we have a thing called the adjacent hex rule. So not only is the stack we're attacking, engaged in battle but all of the surrounding stacks are going to be engaged as well so you can see that it's actually going to be our 12 units versus her 10 there could be up to 42 units in a battle if every single hex is filled so let's enter battle and see what happens here we are nomlik trismegistus attacked larissa mirablis i don't know who came up with these names anyway so she's a defender so she gets to go first see what she does. We're all starting out of range. There's not much you can do, so she's going to cast haste on this fella over here. Now, this is... Oh! It's my turn. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Okay. This is an Eldritch Horror. This is the most powerful unit that a sorcerer can summon, and it's a nightmare. It is a heretic. Since Mark is a heretic, we just course, but it also has haste, meaning it can move twice as far. It has shock breath, so it's essentially a, a dragon breath weapon attack, but with lightning. It does spirit damage and blight damage, and worst of all, it's immune to both blight damage and spirit damage. Which is a problem, since goblins do blight damage and theocrats do spirit damage. But we'll, we'll sort it out somehow. She's also got some um, apprentices here. They are um, the normal sorcerer unit, those sort of like little mini wizards. You can um, fairy fire, throw lightning bolts at us from their walls, you can, dis can dispel magic. You also got some um, archers and these guys, phantasm warriors. They're a mid-level sorcerer summon. They're very tough, do a fairly nice amount of damage. They um, have the chance to shock the target so that when they hit people, the target is stunned and doesn't move as fast. Okay, now, what are we going to do? What have we got? Okay, we have these guys, Goblin Crusaders. They're the best. Look at them, hiding behind the little shields. These are uh, Tier 2 Infantry. Then we have these guys, Flying Goblins, the Exalted. They're Tier 3. They can sweep over the walls and hopefully get into the enemy's face before their arrows can do too much damage to us. We've also got Martyrs. Martyrs are a low-tier unit whose main gimmick is this ability, Absorb Pain, which I'm actually going to use on these Swarm Darters. What that means is if somebody tries to damage the Swarm Darters, and someone is going to try and damage the Swarm Darters, then the damage will actually be transferred to the Martyrs instead. So hopefully that will give the Swarm Darters a chance to actually shoot a bit before they get torn to pieces by the Defenders. Um, we've also got this bad boy over here, the Shrine of Smiting. This is the uh, Tier 4 Theocrat unit. It's basically a great big box of pain has this ability smiting prayer bolts which does more damage depending on the more devout units we have on the field since we have a lot of devout units hopefully it'll hit pretty hard it also has divine vengeance a huge aoe that we can use once per battle now first things first let's do some magic now the spell here holy war poor old trimagistus what's his name nomlik he isn't on the field, so that means this spell is much more expensive than it would usually be. But we're going to cast it anyway. Holy War gives plus 10 damage to all the melee attacks of our unit. So hopefully that will really give us a bit of an edge. There it goes. This thing's all sort of glowing and golden. The glowing, glo glowing glow of impending doom for Larissa. So right, let's advance. 
These guys are going to stand here, hide behind here. I don't think they can get into attack range yet, so I have to wait for next turn. Um, these guys are martyrs. Let's bring them over. What would be nice is we could use them to protect these exalted guys. So, fly just goes over here. Now, if we want to speed things up, we can right click. Makes the current action run a bit faster. Use absorb pain on them, so hopefully they'll last a bit longer as well. Um, our catapult can try and begin to work on the front door. Knock it down. Catapults are very tough. Like all war machines, they have resist resilience, which means they take less damage from projectiles. So hopefully it'll be relatively safe that day. And we have our evangelists. Evangelists are the Fearcrat support units. Among the tricks they can do is healing and touch of faith. Touch of faith boosts the unit's resistance, which makes it take less damage from elemental attacks. So we'll, once again, we'll cast it on these guys to have a feeling the AI is going to try and pick on them. Who else have we got? The Exalted. Okay, well, we're waiting over there for now. Uh, more exalted. Now these guys are flying, so they can just fly over the walls. They can hide over here and hopefully sweep over the walls without taking too much arrow fire. Now uh, Goblin Crusaders over here. We've got another. Take another camera view so we can actually see them. Martyr here. He's going to use his absorb pain on these Crusaders. Now Crusaders are infantry. What that means is. They have little ladders so they can scale the walls. They're very vulnerable when they're doing so, but hopefully some of them will survive enough to actually get off an attack. Move these guys forward. We've moved everyone that we want to move. Is that right? Yep, okay. Over to you, Larissa. Do your worst. What's he gonna do? Chain lightning. Ouch. Oh, where are you going? He's gonna. What are you shooting at? See what you hit. Oh, you're just shooting at my um, trebuchet. Didn't do very much. And they're taking pot shots at my priests. Three will be okay. I suppose, yeah, that's just one way of absorbing pain is to stand next to the unit and get shot instead of the unit. Not quite how I intended it, but we live and learn. Doesn't look like my trebuchet is going to last much longer either. Poor Crusaders. Taking shots at those guys now. Fortunate they are protected by the martyrs. Now, hopefully, I will have just enough time to um, knock the wall down before my trebuchet gets torn to bits. Oh, not quite yet. Well, we'll have to hope for the best there. This guy's going to fly over here, so next turn he'll be able to um, get across. Swarm darters are finally in attack range, I believe. Let's just stand here. Can we shoot now? Yes. Now, swarm darters actually fire little tiny mosquitoes, so they home in. That means they've got no range penalty and no line of sight penalty from shooting over the walls. You can see they do quite a hefty amount of damage, and hopefully they'll survive next turn to do some more damage again. In fact, since I have a feeling, let's cast Dispel. Instant Wrath means anyone attacking the swarm darters will actually take some of the damage reflected back onto them, so hopefully it'll help them at least punish people who try and pick on my poor defenseless little mosquito shooting friends. Right, these guys are going to run forwards over here. Try and climb up onto those walls and you come up onto here. Keep climbing onto their little ladders, ready for action. Unfortunately now, because they stood on the walls, their defense has been reduced quite heavily. Which, yeah, is a bit of a problem, but that's the risk you take if you try and climb up onto the wall of an enemy held castle. These guys are going to fly right over here. I'm getting ready to to attack. And these guys, can we? Are we already martyring? Oh, we're already martyred. You guys can just hide at the back and you're probably going to die anyway because of absorb pain, you two. And this, can we get into range and do anything fun? Right, we're in shooty range. I don't think this is our big area of effect attack, but we're not quite in range to do it yet. We could hit the um, Eldritch Horror. It looks like we'd also blow up our own trebuchet, and we don't really want to do that. We do have these smiting prayer bolts, though. So, can we hit anyone with those? Let's kill these archers. So we can get there. Yep, there they go. And who else have we got? The Evangelists, poor guys. Priest, healer, heal thyself. Heal thyself. <laughs> and the martyrs. There we go. And 
you guys fly over and come in to start picking on the on the artist over here. Okay, over to you again, Lyra, Larissa. Ouch. Okay, now these are tier one archers against tier three units, so they're quite tough. Hopefully they'll survive a bit. So our Shrine of Smiting, pretty tough unit as well. Hopefully it won't um won't die. So they are pouring a lot of fire into it. Maybe I should have cast Instant Wrath on that instead. Probably should have. Oh well. Yep. The side effect is the AI does understand things like Instant Wrath. So it knows that if it attacks the Swarm Darters, it's going to take damage itself. So it's not. So I, I guess the spell is kind of working. Oh, what are you up to, Mr. Eldritch Horror? Sort of slowly floating now. Normally he wouldn't be able to move that fast, but Larissa did cast Haste on him. So yeah. He's a, quite a mobile demonic entity from beyond the grave. Now, these guys are flying over here. Guard. And the trebuchet finally gets to knock the door down. Hurrah! Leaving the way open. Ugh. What is this door made of? It's tough, isn't it? How many hit points have they got there? Three. Psst. Oh well. Time for our next trick. The Shrine of Smiting has Divine Vengeance. 10 fire and 20 lightning damage to everyone within range who's not devout. So, let's use it to blast these guys apart. Gotcha. Unfortunately, it's only used once per battle, but you can see it's always a very effective attack. Swarm Darters, who miraculously are still alive, can start um, dishing out more pain over here to these um, apprentices. We're also quite tough units. Crusaders up, climbing up onto the walls. What's going on over here? Now, here we have a bit of a problem. The Exalted have blocked off our uh, Crusaders. The Crusaders can't get off the wall because the Exalted are in the way. Not very good planning on my part. Unfortunately, that means these guys are going to have to take an attack of opportunity from these Phantasm Warriors. But I don't really see a way around. Oh, I do. I can flank them. Now, the Phantasm Warriors can only do an attack of opportunity on these guys if they're facing them. If we run up behind them and make them turn around, like we're doing... Oh, or we could just kill them. <laughs> that works too. Anyway, we'll fly over here. Start bringing, hitting these guys. I was trying to be all clever there. It shows me. <laughs> That's why I just kill things. This is what we get. Anyway, okay, so the Crusaders can hopefully finish off these guys. Nope. Yeah, Phantasm Warriors have the ethereal ability, I believe. No, incorporeal, that's how it's called. Gives them 60% physical protection, making them very tough to kill. So they're the tanks for in the Sorcerer's Army. What are our Martyrs doing? Martyrs are kind of over here, so they can kind of run forward. Can you hit anyone with a rock? David and Goliath? No? Okay. Let's hide here. What else have we got? These guys might as well try and um, bring in some fire support. Can they do anything? Over here, in range to maybe convert the enemy? Nope, nothing in range. So yeah, just block. So we've got more martyrs, more rocks. And... Yep, route of units. Can we have any spells we can cast? Nope, route casting points as well. So, over to you Larissa. See what she's gonna do. But, oof, there goes my trebuchet. And here comes this guy. It's not going to be pretty. Ouch. Haha! Instant wrath. Got did 11 damage back. Oh, and it gets healed by the um, the apprentice. The apprentice for the sorcerer. One of his main jobs is to follow the sorcerer's armies around and use healing abilities. His healing ability only works on the summoned units, but sorcerer armies tend to have a lot of summoned units, so the um, and they tend to synergize quite well with each other. But yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Right. Now, this guy is still a very big problem. We've got a bunch of units, but the Eldritch Horror is a terrifying, terrifying beast. And really, the safest thing to do is to shoot it with ranged attacks. Ranged attacks that we don't really have. <laughs> so, um, okay, first things first. Let's kill the apprentices. Get those out of our faces. You're dead, right? They're quite squishy units, so it doesn't take much to take them down. Um, right, should we shoot Larissa or should we rain fire? We really can't do much damage. Maybe we can sort of bring, do a bit more damage to those apprentices. Trying to shoot through the walls, never that good an idea. But um, 
Yeah, so we can attack with the Crusaders, but the Crusaders, yeah, aren't going to be doing much back. Eldritch Horrors, immune to Blight damage. Thanks. At least we can kill the Apprentices. Yep, kill the Apprentices. And what can we do? Tier 4 units are the most powerful units in the game, and these Eldritch Horrors are certainly living up to their reputation. Um, and yeah, this poor old Crusader. Is he going to be sacrificed for the cause? Don't really see any other option for the poor guy. So I hit him, I do 8 to 12 damage. He takes me back, does 10 to 14 damage. And he has the fearsome ability, which means I have to roll a save, otherwise I'll panic and run away like a little girl. Oh, or I'll just die. <laughs> okay, um, anything else? Can we throw a rock at him? No, we're not even ranged to throw rocks. Are you in range to throw rocks? Yay! Suck rock, David and Goliath. Ha! Two damage. And Crusaders, you can finish with you. You've moved. Everyone's moved. The Larissa's last stand. Just her and her eldritch abomination. She's chucking lightning bolts. She's because of the test scenario. She's still. Oh, she's leveled up. She's level two now. Oh, and Larissa has officially decided there's no point in staying behind the walls anymore. The AO has decided this because she's realized that, well, I'm entirely behind the walls and there's no defensive advantage to using it anymore, so she's decided to come out and play. Now, goodbye, Larissa. <laughs> it's time for your wicked, heretical ways to you to finally pay the price. Off you go. Blast it off into orbit. And then, Shrine of Smiting versus Eldritch Horror. Who will win? I'll give you a clue. It's the Eldritch Horror. <laughs> the Shrine of Smiting's main damage is Spirit, and unfortunately the Eldritch Horror is immune to that. So, anything else we can do? We just have to close it down and like, in the best tradition of religious fanatics, we are simply going to have to drown it in the blood of the Righteous Warriors and hope that in the end, we win. We'll get him in the end, somehow. More rocks? We have more rocks? Who are you? A martyr. More rocks! <laughs> Flanking attack with rocks? Oh wow! Actually, quite a heavy hitter if it's not um, hiding behind the walls. Um, it really is becoming a David and Goliath moment. Maybe we should have just brought martyrs, left everyone else behind, just drown the enemy in a sea of pebbles. Okay. See what this guy can do. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> oh! They got my martyrs! Well, they. They did. They at least had a, had a go before they got um, blown to bits by the electrical, electrical spewing demon monster thing. Oh, and he's put himself in a spot where I can only melee attack him from one place at once. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, this guy is way more hassle than he's rough. Kill him. Okay, how much damage has he got left? He's got 23 hit points. Trying to smite him. Smite. Two hit. points. This is not pretty. Okay, I'm not supposed to show you this, but <laughs> Shrines of Smiting can float, which means they can float over walls. Now, this isn't a final animation, so I, I apologize for how ugly this looks. Plop. Right, <laughs> point blank range, die. <laughs> nope, got an exalted. Can't get to him because he's hiding on top of the walls and there's nowhere to stand. <laughs> I can't hit him. Damn you, AI. I've been outsmarted by my own AI. Okay, uh, he's, in the, he's too clever for me. I think we're going to get him now. We're going to get him. Yes! Lone Crusader stabs him, takes him down, and that was the end of Larissa Mirabilis.